Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. Um, if you've been following along the channel, I've uh, taken the Pontiac 350 out of my 68 Le Mans, and I have got it cleaned up and painted, and now it's time to start putting everything back together again. I um, wanted to start with the timing chain and pretty much redo the entire front of the engine. Um, there aren't a lot of videos out there. I was looking for videos on how to teach myself how to do it because I've never done this before. Um, so I kind of wanted to make a standalone video on the timing chain. Now, if you want to watch the previous teardown video, I'll link it up here, um, showing how to get basically everything off of the front of your engine. And it's something you can do while it's in the car. In my case, I've got it out and on the engine stand. But uh, we'll see if we can figure this out. And then that way there's a video out there on timing chain installations for Pontiac V8. So let's get started. Trying to get some of that primer off there, get this cleaned up so I can get a nice tight fit on the seal. Okay, so here's my new seal that's going in. Um, some I've seen have a lot of rubber on the sides, um, which can tend to roll up a little bit. This one's kind of nice because it's just got the rubber at the base to go right down here on this edge. And what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of RTV along there so that I get a good seal when I drop it in. Really just need a little bit. That's too much. And see if we can't tap this down. All right, get some of this excess off. Alright, I got a little bit of a lip here. I can put my finger in it. But I think I because I've got the because I've got the uh, silicone in there, I think I should be okay. I actually put it back on the floor, did a little bit more hammering, and there's pretty much no gap in there anymore. I think we're good to go. Alright, let's get the uh, cam sprocket off. There we go. Whoops. Right, so this came off along with this. Just trying to figure out how it goes back on. basically offset. I see it now. There's a little tab right here that goes into the little tab opening right there. So okay, just wanted to make sure I put it back together the right way. That seems to be on there really well. Don't want to break anything. See if I can figure out what's going on. All right, looks like it just needs a little persuasion. Uh, the problem is now the bottom sprocket's not moving. There we go. Just got to get them to come out together. All right. There we go. 
All right, we've got our timing chain off. You can see, not sure if you can make it out, but there's a little dot here. It was basically pointing straight up at 12 o'clock. I've got the little dot here on the, the bottom sprocket. It's also pointing straight up at 12 o'clock. Now I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and get the new one on. All right, so again, dots up here at 12 o'clock. Slides on pretty easily. The dots on this one right here at 12 o'clock as well. All right, let's see if we can get our chain on. All right, I'm on the key. Still at 12, still at 12. against it. Yep. So, new one is installed. I'm going to put some assembly lube on the chain and the sprocket. And then I'm going to get that blocking plate back up. There's a bearing that's on that as well. I'm going to lube the inside of that up as well. Put that back on and get it reattached. My assembly lube might have frozen. All right, got this a little warmed up. All right, so I've got some assembly lube on there get that chain nice and coated and got a little bit in here as well so let's see I need to mark up this little tab with this spot right there and get my bolts and washer started now this needs to be torqued down to 45 foot-pounds. So let's get it finger tight and check it once again. We've still at our top dead. We're at the top dead, 12 o'clock up there. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit and get this locked down. All right, I have it set to 45 foot-pounds. All right, we're at 45. So I had a little revelation last night. Um, this was really, really hard to get off, but yet only required 45 put foot pounds of torque to get on. So I think what I should have done was actually put some Loctite on there. I'm gonna go ahead and take, leave everything as it is, but take the bolt back out and put some Loctite on there. I don't know much, but I'm pretty sure Loctite doesn't stick real well to oil and grease. So I'm going to clean this up to make sure it sticks well. Do I have my Loctite? Yes, I do. So I've got Loctite. And I'm going to clean this up, put this bolt back in. And I don't think I mentioned it, but it is a three-quarter to put that cam sprocket top thingy back on. It's a three-quarter inch. All right, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit, get the Loctite on there, and put that bolt back in. Way too much. All right, let's get this back in. There's our little tab. Got 
that back on. Just need to torque it down to 45. We are back on. So I've got my timing chain cover bolts cleaned up, soaked them in vinegar overnight, and did a little brake clean last minute. Basically got everything cleaned up all around here. So I'm ready to go ahead and put on the gasket and then the timing chain cover. The other thing I need to do is make sure I put in my little sleeves. Bought a new set of sleeves that'll go in here and it helps make sure that the cover is straight on this and that the seal is good. So I've got my little sleeves that go in here. There's one. I need to clean this one out. All right, got that cleaned out a little bit better. You can see they've got a little split in them from the top. So basically they need to be squeezed in so that they go in here properly. Give them a little love tap and they are good to go. I'm gonna try something a little different. What I wanna do is put on the RTV on the block, then put up the gasket. And the reason why is you end up trying to cover both sides. And so what I want to do is just get the RTV where it needs to be. And then put the gasket on. If that makes sense. So basically what I'm thinking is I can tape off where the RTV needs to go, put that on, then I don't have to deal with trying to coat both sides of the gasket. And I don't end up with too much and it going all over the place and all of that. Okay, even though I did use assembly lube on here, I'm going to actually give it a little bit of engine oil. I'm going to do a little bit more around the water jackets because this is really pitted. And any little excess that I get goes onto the tape. Oh, way too much. Let's try to keep it off the timing chain, Tom. This will be a little easier on this side without the stud in the way. All right, so we've got it all the way around. Let's go put some on our gasket. Okay, let's get our gasket on. Try to make sure everything lines up fairly well. Just to check, I dropped the old water pump on. I want to make sure that the two bolts, the studs that stick out, do not have to go through the water pump as well. So it looks like I'm good to go. The water pump can be taken off without taking off the bolts for the timing chain. So yeah, you can basically go put this, the two bolts in down here, two bolts in here, go through the two studs, and then put the nuts on here, and the timing chain will be on. Good to know. I'm going to set it right there for now until I can get the bolts started. Okay. Got to make sure it is on. It's 
it's on that post. It is on that post. So I'll make sure you've got your washers on all of your bolts too, I'm guessing, because you don't want to get it on and find out it's not working. Okay, what I like to do whenever I'm setting a gasket, it's kind of weird, and other people may not do it, but I like to go finger tight. Or in this case, just enough so that it's snug up against the gasket. And I like to let it set for and anywhere from a half an hour to an hour it sets there and then I torque everything down it's kind of how I do it I don't remember where I learned how to do it but it does make sure that you're not squishing everything out and the gasket doesn't get you know push all of the good stuff out so I'm hoping that uh, I can get this to set up and everything will be good I'm hoping you can make that out. Probably not, but it's timing cover to block 35 foot pounds. Okay, so I got my tape off and found my 916s. And I've got that snug on that side. And it's snug on this side. It has been the appropriate amount of time. Now I'm going to torque this down. I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. And because it's on the engine stand, I like to lift up rather than pushing down. There's one. There's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six. Alright, okay, let's see, what do we get from Butler? It looks like I've got my water pump plates. Oh, those are taped in there pretty good. Looks like it's all taped in there pretty good. Um, basically, it's the two plates that go with the water pump and my one piece uh, oil pan gasket. Only problem I've had is. Apparently nobody sells the 8 bolt water pump for the Pontiac anymore. Um, Butler's out of it, uh, Rock Auto's out of stock, uh, I've tried a couple different places. Um, Butler does have the flow cooler version, but that's twice as much as a water pump should be and I really don't feel like spending that on this engine. Uh, like I said, all the money's going into the Pontiac 400 this next year as I put this 350 back in. So. I really don't want to spend the money for uh, a really expensive water pump that I can't use anymore, basically. So uh, I'm going to keep digging around, searching, trying to find a water pump for this thing. Hopefully I can find a replacement. So the next thing is the dampener or harmonic balancer, depending on what you call it. Um, this one came with a little sort of chuck that goes, that's part of this crank bolt. And this was the the chuck that was already in there, the little tab that sticks up that's already in there was still pretty good. It's not worn down or anything like that. So I'm going to stick with the one that's on there. And I just need to line up this little groove. There's a little tiny groove in there. And I just need to line it up so that it goes in 
and it's just to press on. There's no for a Pontiac, as far as I know, there's no need to use one of the pullers to to get it on. It just fits on. And I believe the torque spec for this is 160, which I do not have uh, a torque wrench that goes up that high. So I'm going to have to go to my friend's house and borrow his torque wrench, but I do want to get this started. Alright, so I've got it finger tight on here and just need to torque it down. There you go. It's nice and tight on there. Just need to get that torque down and the uh, harmonic balancer is back on. Alright, take that back. I actually forgot I want to do the thread lock on this bolt as well. So I backed it out, went to borrow the uh, went to borrow my uh, neighbor's torque wrench. And the tricky thing I know when getting this off was that you kind of want to spit the engine wants to spin when you start putting all the pressure on this so I need to put a screw how I got it off is I put a screwdriver in the back into the uh, flex plate um, and so the best thing I need to do I think is just to put another screwdriver back in there to tighten it up so let's see how that goes but I've got this on now with the thread locker finger tight and I did verify it it is 160 foot pounds um, for this bolt uh, let's see if the screwdriver can hold it. Alright. Got the big meaty torque wrench. And let's see, I gotta make sure I got it at 160. So we were right on 160. And I'm going to lift again. Oh. There we go. So, dampener harmonic balancer is installed. Let me go ahead and Get this out. Pretty much the only kind I could find are with these really crappy impellers. The cast impeller that came with the stock one works so much better, I've heard, than these. And I just don't know. It's the only one I've been able to find that is the eight pump or the eight bolt water pump. So I don't know. Uh, my original is just really rusted up bad. This is my original one that came that was just in there and it does work. It's just, I mean, it's not spinning as freely as, for example, so I don't know. This one actually spins about as free as this one so there's no noise coming from it maybe I can clean this one up and go with that and take this one back I don't know what do you guys think let me know in the comments below should I try to save this original one because it's got that better cast impeller or this crappy stamped one so I'm letting the uh, old water pump soak in here for this vinegar here for a while uh, did a little bit of scraping and that's why it's pretty rust colored but uh this actually might clean up as long as this still spins freely then i think uh, it's something that i can actually reuse i don't know we'll see how it turns out i'm gonna let it soak overnight okay here it is 24 hours later still a bit crusty on there but i think i can scrape away a lot of that but look at all the rust that came out i'm gonna go ahead and rinse this off clean it up and see how it looks all right so it seemed to clean up pretty good i actually rinsed it off with water 
And oh my god, I cannot tell you how pissed off I am at these. Look at this, WD-40. Doesn't work. WD-40. Doesn't work. WD-40. Doesn't work. Three full cans. This is getting ridiculous. Anyway. Um, <laughs> deep breath. But yeah, um, I did use some PV Blaster eventually because that barely still works. Got it sprayed down so it doesn't kind of flash rust on me. Um, and I got it sprayed down in here to make sure it doesn't rust up inside as well. But this spins pretty well. It's not making any noise. So yeah, what do you guys think? Should I try to save this water pump? I mean, it's the original, but sometimes the originals work better than the new stuff. Case in point with my WD-40 cans. So yeah, um, I'm going to wrap it up here. I was hoping to get the front end of the engine completely done for the video just in case anybody was out there uh, wanting to see the whole uh, reinstallation of uh, the timing chain and the cover and then of course the water pump so I wasn't able to get to that uh, if you guys think I should salvage the old water pump I'll do a water pump video next uh, on installing that I've got the new plates I can either go with the new crappy water pump or with the old one and try to clean that one up so let me know in the meantime, I wanted to say uh, thanks very much to everyone who has subscribed. I actually just reached 500 subscribers. No, that doesn't sound like a lot, but for me, that's amazing because I'm not very interesting. I'm not very funny and I have no idea what I'm doing. So this is kind of cool that you guys are, are subscribing and, and joining in on the journey. Um, so uh, like the video if you can, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. Thanks very much for tuning in and we will catch you next time.